Hello friend, this is Rupesh and you are watching CBB Nerds video series on C++ and today's topic is this mutex trilog. So actually this is a member function of this mutex class and there are so many trilog functions. So if you want to see how many are there, this is the list. There are total nine trilog functions. But uh, we are not going to discuss this one. We are going to discuss this one today and if you see this, we have this mutex variable and we will apply trilog on that. Before, if you remember, we were using this mutex and we were locking it. So this is kind of a blocking call and this is kind of a non-blocking call. So if you are not able to lock the mutex, you will come back and return false here. Okay, that's the job of this trilog. It's that straightforward. Don't worry about that. We'll go through one by one of all these points and complete all the points. Okay, so trilog tries to lock the mutex. Mind it, it is trying to lock the mutex. It is not actually locking the mutex because if you go and try to lock the mutex like this, then in case this mutex is not free, it means some another thread has already logged it, then you will get blocked. You will be waiting for this particular mutex. But in case of this try lock, you will try to lock this mutex and you will come back if it is not able to be locked. Okay, so it returns immediately. This is very important point. It will return. It won't get blocked. And on successful lock acquisition returns true. It means if this if statement is true, it means this try lock was succeeded. To lock this particular mutex. If it returns false, we actually didn't get the mutex. This is what it is. Okay. So second point is if trilog is not able to lock the mutex, then it doesn't get the get blocked. That's why it is called non-blocking. Yeah. That's what the second point is. It is non-blocking. Third one is if trilog is called again by the same thread which owns the mutex, the behavior is undefined obviously so it is deadlock situation yeah that's what i have written here yeah it's undefined behavior and it's kind of a deadlock situation if you want to be able to lock the same mutex by the same thread yeah more than one time then go for the recursive mutex this is uh, another type of mutex which is called recursive mutex if you want to be able to lock this particular mutex one more time then you can use this recursive mutex okay but we are not discussing about this recursive matrix. We will see that in coming videos. Okay, so all points are covered. I have this particular example here, which is going to increase the counter for, what is this, one, two, three, one lakh time. Okay, so if I'm going to increase this particular variable in two thread, T1 and T2, and having the same function, it means we have this function acting like a thread two time so it is going to share this particular counter because it is a global variable so two thread will be trying to access this counter that's why we will apply mutex here to handle this critical situation i mean critical section not situation so you understood right this is global so it will act as a common resource in both the threads this one and this one so let's run this program and try to see how this try lock will work so let's compile this I hope there is no error. Oh my goodness, there is some error here. I don't know. Okay, this function is mismatching here. I just forgot to change this place. Correct. Let's compile this again. Okay, fine. Let's run this. Okay, so the counter could increase up to this number. And this is not a fixed number. If I'll compile this again, there is going to be some another number. See, and if I'll compile again, sorry, run again, and run again, 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 again. See. It is giving you the different different numbers because first of all this threading and locking is totally dependent on the cpus so sometimes cpu will give you the lock sometime the cpu may delay to give you the lock and even if it is not locked i mean cpu may give you the permission to lock this pretty fast in some case and sometime it will give you a little slower so it depends but why it is not 2 lakh, it is some number like 76,000, 73,000, 79,000, but why it is not 1 lakh? So this is 
1 lakh oh yeah then in that case it should be 2 lakh this counter should be incremented by 2 lakhs but it is not so let's see why it is not so let's suppose this is 41 and let's suppose there is this another thread 42 and they both are trying to access this counter so let's see what will happen here and this both threads are this function okay so let's suppose thread 1 is reaching to this counter first and it will try to log that and it will get the mutex which is because it is not logged yet so counter will get the lock and simultaneously when t1 was actually incrementing this particular counter t2 also came and tried to lock it but actually at that time t1 was busy in incrementing this particular counter and t1 actually didn't release that log so t2 cannot get that log so as i said if this try lock will not be able to get the lock it will return false so in that case t2 will not enter here okay so this loop will again start for i is equal to 1 okay and maybe what will happen when it will come again for the second time so this was first time if it will come for the second time maybe t1 was still busy in incrementing this so t1 came first first time here it was busy t2 came second time and still it was busy but when t2 is coming for the third time that time actually what t1 was doing t1 had released this lock here and t1 was maybe incrementing this particular variable and at that time maybe t2 asked to get the lock and obviously as it was unlocked then t2 got the lock then t2 will increment this so did you see this t2 incrementing this particular counter at this second time third time it is getting that mutex and going to successfully increment that but second time and first time it actually skipped that's why we are getting all those random values so we don't know what will happen but i am giving you the rough idea what might be happening so that you are getting those random values and we don't know what will lock first and what will happen but just because of this try lock we are not getting that 2 lakh okay this is what number we should get but as we are not waiting for t1 or t2 to complete and give me the lock we are actually skipping it okay so if you you are not getting that lock you will skip that particular iteration and you will increment this counter and maybe it is possible that t1 was busy in incrementing this particular counter and you actually tried for one lakh time this is quite possible so i'm giving you the scenarios how to think but really if you want to get this 2000 sorry 2 lakh number here what you should do here is you just use lock so let me just give you that program so if i will lock it here then we don't need this particular if condition okay because this will definitely wait for that particular thing okay so let me just remove this yeah so now you won't go further until unless you have this lock so both of the threads will actually wait for another thread to give the lock so you are not skipping it that's why this counter will always be 2 lakh so let's compile this and run this so it is 2 lakh and then if you will again run this no matter how many times you run this it is going to be 2 lakh okay because we are waiting for another thread to release that lock i mean mutex and you are getting that lock for your thread but in case of that one let me just undo this in case of this one you was not waiting you just skip this iteration and iteration and iteration so it depends on the cpu speed if my cpu is very good it will iterate so fast that maybe t1 or t2 was busy in incrementing this and another loop actually finished okay so that's quite possible so if i will run this sorry compile this again and run this oh okay 
yeah sometime it is possible that you may get this 2 lakh okay so anything is possible in, in this thread world so you see this so many different different numbers are coming okay then so we will sum this video thanks for watching and next video is about i don't know maybe this thread i mean trialog it is really very interesting trialog you know it will take so many mutexes like this let me show you that m2 comma m3 and on and on and on and it will try to lock all those mutex all together and we'll see this topic in next video so thanks for watching if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this thanks for watching bye bye